So um, this is about one of the most uh, unique features of OpenMM. So far as I know, no other molecular simulation package really has anything like this. That's what we call custom forces. So we have um, a lot of standard forces excuse me, that are built into OpenMM for all the things that are found in lots of different force fields. You know, harmonic bonds, harmonic angles, Coulomb, Leonard Jones forces, etc. cetera. Um, they're all built in. Uh, and this will cover a pretty large fraction of all force fields. But sometimes you need something else. Uh, you know, there's a lot of force fields out there. Some of them have much different things. Uh, new methods are constantly being developed. And what if you want to do something that isn't one of the built-in ones? Well, you can write a plugin. OpenMM is based around a plugin architecture. Anyone can write a new piece of code that adds a new feature. You drop it into your plugin directory. It gets loaded at runtime, and it's just there. Great. Uh, except this is really hard, like especially um, if it involves like writing GPU code. Most uh, scientists do not know how to write GPU code, and believe me, it's not it's not actually all that fun. Uh, it's probably something you want to avoid doing if you can get away with it. Um, so, yes, you can do this, but it's not a great solution for most people. That's why we created custom forces, and the goal is to combine some of the flexibility of a plugin with most of the simplicity of a standard force. And the idea behind custom forces is really simple. You specify a mathematical expression for what you want the functional form of your force to be, and we take it from there. So for example, uh, uh, like you know, you create a custom non-bonded force. Uh, you work with this just like an ordinary uh, non-bonded force, but instead it's a custom non-bonded force. You give us an expression that is a function of r. r is the distance between each pair of atoms. Uh, and we do everything from there. Uh, there actually are a bunch of different types of custom forces because each one is designed to make a particular class of forces easy to implement. So for example, we have uh, a class called custom bond force. It implements uh, bonds between pairs of particles, uh, and it assumes very specifically that the energy uh, of interaction for each bond is a function of the distance between the two particles. So it's you know a symmetric, uh, isotropic, etc. Uh, but it depends on the di on the f distance between the two particles. But how it depends on that distance is completely arbitrary. Any function you want, you can do that. Uh, very similar custom angle force is uh, you know the angle formed by three particles, and we assume that the energy of each angle is a function of what that angle is. Uh, custom torsion force does the same thing, but for four particles, uh, and the energy is a function of the dihedral angle formed by those four particles. Custom external force, uh, I like to think of this as just a force that's being imposed from the outside. So it's applied independently to each particle. Uh, the energy can be a function of that particle's position, but it doesn't, isn't affected by the position of any other particle. So you would use this like for restraining forces, uh, boxes, things like that. In fact, we'll see some examples of it later on. Custom non-bonded force, uh, you saw just a moment ago. So this is a non-bonded interaction between pairs of particles. So every particle interacts with every other particle. And the energy is a function of the distance between the two particles. But what that uh, function is, is arbitrary. You can specify anything you want. We also have some more complicated ones. Uh, there's one called custom GB force. It's actually a very complicated uh, class. But it can support a wide range of implicit solvent uh, models. And it is complicated because implicit solvent models are very complicated, but you know it takes maybe a dozen lines to implement uh, most implicit solvent function forces with this class. And you know if you were just doing it directly, it would maybe be a thousand lines of CUDA code to do the same thing. Uh, and then we also have one called custom H bond force that can support a wide range of hydrogen bonding models. So here's a very simple example: uh, harmonic restraints. This is. You know, a common thing you want to do in MD simulations, you want to restrain certain atoms to remain close to some particular position. Most MD packages have a built-in feature to do harmonic restraints. OpenM doesn't. The reason it doesn't is because it doesn't need one. Uh, it takes about three lines to implement this with a custom external force. So let's just say this is the function that you want. Uh, it's just going to be uh, you know, harmonic in the distance between each particle. So x, y, and z are the position of a particle. 
x naught, y naught, z naught are the position that you want it to be restrained to. And we just say we want it to be harmonic in the distance between them with you know, some spring constant, which I've hard coded to 10. Uh, so how do we do this? Well, we say custom external force. And we just give it uh, a piece of text here. It's just a string that is the mathematical expression we want. And if you compare this to this, you will notice they are basically identical. So all you'd worry about is the math. You don't have to worry about the algorithm of how this gets calculated, how it's implemented on the GPU, anything. You just say, what is the mathematical expression you want? Uh, now in this, we do have the, this x naught, y naught, z naught. These are parameters. Uh, they are defined per particle. So every particle has its own x naught, y naught, z naught. And we just need to tell the force that. So we say force add per particle parameter x naught. Uh, and we just do that. And you just have to tell it. You know, these are things. These are variables. They will appear in the expression. A value will be defined for them per particle. And now we just have to tell it what particles we want to actually apply this uh, restraining force to. You could apply it to one particle. You could apply it to every particle, whatever you want. Uh, and the way you do it is you just call add particle for every particle you want this force applied to. So we say force dot add particle. Uh, we uh, pass in what particle we want it applied to. So let's say, okay, uh, number five. And then you give it a, just a tuple here, which is the values of all the per particle parameters. So we're just going to restrain particle five to the location 0, 1, minus 0.5 nanometers. Uh, and that's all you have to do. And now you've just created this harmonic restraining force in just a few lines of Python code. Let's talk about some other more complicated examples or uh, some common things you might want this for. Um, so uh, the non -bonded, standard non-bonded force, uh, you know, in molecular simulations, you usually have a Coulomb interaction to uh, handle electrostatics and then a Leonard-Jones interaction to handle uh, the Van der Waals forces. And uh, it's, so the uh, interaction energy between two particles is this particular function of the distance. And it depends on these two parameters, sigma and epsilon. Now, you don't normally define a sigma and epsilon for every possible pair of uh, particles. Instead, you just define a value for each particle. And then you use a set of combining rules to say, OK, given you know, epsilon, epsilon, two, epsilon 1, epsilon 2 for the two particles, what should I use as the epsilon that appears in here? Uh, and non-bonded force use what is called the lorentz bertolo combining rules. So it uses the uh, geometric mean of the epsilons and the arithmetic mean of the sigmas. Uh, this is very common. For example, it is what the amber force fields all use. Uh, and this is what it does. But some force fields use other ones. Uh, for example, the OPLS uh, force field uses what's called the Jorgensen combining rules, where you take the geometric means of both sigma and epsilon. So what do you do if you want to implement OPLS, uh, given that a non-bonded force uses a different combining rule? Well, one option is you just say, oh, whatever. The combining rule is really going to make very little difference in the force. And this is true. Uh, so let's just go and use the uh, built-in combining rule, and that will be fine. You know, that's one option. But another option is to say, well, let's just implement this combining rule. No problem. Because with custom non-bonded force, it's really easy to implement any functional form we want. So when you create your custom non-bonded force, you just give it uh, this mathematical expression here, uh, which is uh, exactly this expression that we gave right here. So it's a function of sigma, epsilon, and r, which of course is the distance between the particles. And then we follow this by defining, oh, and by the way, uh, eps is the square root of eps 1 times eps 2. Sig is the square root of sig 1 times sig 2. Um, so whenever you see semicolon, uh, I like to think of that as where. So the energy is this, where eps is defined as this, and where sig is defined as this. Uh, and then we just say, uh, add some per particle parameters, eps and sig. So uh, remember, that th in the previous example, uh, you added a per particle parameter, and then you gave an, an expression for the energy of one particle. In this case, you're defining per particle parameters, but the expression is for the interaction energy between two particles. So you define a single par per particle parameter, eps, and that turns into two variables in this expression, eps1 and eps2. Uh, and so we, from those, we can then calculate a single epsilon that we will use for the energy. That makes sense? Um, just some other features of custom forces. 
You can also have uh, global parameters. A global parameter has just a single value for the whole force. It's the same for every particle or bond or whatever. Um, the, a very good thing about this is that uh, global parameters are actually stored in the context rather than the force, which means that it's very easy and efficient to have them like changing over the course of your simulation. Whereas like with the uh, per particle parameters, you can change them during a simulation, but it's much more expensive to do it. Um, so when you've got something that you want to change like continuously and frequently over your simulation, uh, it's much more efficient if you can do it with a global parameter. So a few uh, of the custom forces support tabulated functions. So you can just give us a lookup table. Uh, we'll fit a spline through that. And this lookup table then just becomes a function. And you can use that function however you want in your expressions. Uh, the only ones that currently support that are custom non-bonded force, custom GB force, and custom H-bond force. You may have been wondering about, I mean, this looks great, but isn't this going to be really slow? I mean, you know, we've gone to all this work to write the super efficient GPU code, and now you're saying, oh, just give us a piece of text that we're going to interpret and use to implement a force. Isn't that going to be really, really slow? Um, and uh, the actual answer is that no. Um, excuse me. For the reference and the current CUDA platform, the one that's going away soon, um, yes, it actually is much slower. We use an interpreter to evaluate these expressions. Um, and so, yeah, it's a lot slower. But for OpenCL, that is not the case. And for the new CUDA platform that will be appearing in the next version, it also will not be the case. Uh, and the reason is that uh, we actually generate our kernels at runtime. So you give us this piece of text. It looks like you know, nothing special is happening. You're just giving us this mathematical expression. But there's actually a huge amount that happens. We take that expression. We parse it to uh, create an abstract, abstract syntax tree. Uh, we perform a whole bunch of optimizations on that uh, expression. We analytically differentiate it to get an expression for the force. Uh, we then generate uh, OpenCL code on the fly to efficiently compute the force, the expressions for the force and energy. We stick them in the middle of the kernel. We send it down to the OpenCL compiler. Um, this whole process takes you know, less than a second to happen. Uh, and the result is that you've now got a fully optimized GPU kernel uh, specifically for this force that you've uh, given us. And so the result is that there actually is very little performance difference between a standard force and the same force implemented as a custom force. So let's take a look at an example here. Let's suppose that you want to do a simulation, you know, uh, maybe a water droplet, for example. And instead of doing it in periodic boundary conditions, you just want it to, to be in sort of a spherical potential, like a spherical container. And uh, you want your atoms to be restrained, to not be able to leave that sphere. Uh, and a very common way that people do this is with a harmonic potential uh, that, that is spherically symmetric. So almost everything in, that you see in this slide uh, should look really familiar. It will look almost identical to things that you've seen in previous examples. But the important part is uh, just these four lines here. In fact, yeah, these four lines uh, right here, where we say uh, we create a custom external force. And we just uh, we have to define what our expression is, what is the force that we want to apply to every atom. And so all we do is we calculate uh, the distance of each particle from the origin. So r is just square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Uh, and then we say, this is our function. So if r is less than uh, 1 nanometer, this will just be 0. Since we say you know, that will be negative, take the max of 0 and a negative thing. So the potential is going to be absolutely flat out to 1 nanometer. And then beyond 1 nanometer, it will increase harmonically. Um, so we do that. We then call add particle on our force for every particle in the system, because we want this to be applied to every particle. So we just you know, say get num particles, loop over all of them, call add particle i. And we pass in this empty tuple here, because that's where you specify per particle parameters, and there are none in this case. Um, and then we add that force to our system. Uh, and just by adding these four lines to your script, you've now implemented a spherical potential. Notice that you know, some MD packages actually have a built-in feature to like, constrain your system inside a spherical potential. Not all of them do. OpenMM doesn't, but it doesn't need to, because here you go four lines, and you've just implemented it yourself. 
So let's take a look at what happens when we do this. So you'll find this example in the examples directory. Uh, it is called uh, watersphere.py. So I'm just going to type python watersphere.py. And I just take a moment while it runs. There we go. It's finished running. And it has now created a file called output.pdb, which uh, has the trajectory, the results of that simulation. So uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, try this and uh, try the exercises that are listed here. When I first wrote this example, uh, I hadn't thought about that. I just put 300 Kelvin just by force of habit. Uh, and then I increased the, it to 2 nanometers, and nothing happened. It didn't get any bigger. And I was thinking, oh, what's wrong with my simulation? Is there a like, bug in the force? And, or, and then finally I realized, well, duh, water is liquid at 300 Kelvin. So it's a droplet. And you, uh, you know, eventually it'll all evaporate. But that takes much, much longer than you see in the simulation. So then I pushed it up to 1,000 Kelvin, which blew it out. And then you get this nice uh, gas of water molecules. And you in increase the radius, and it expands. And all is good. Um, so let me just talk about a few. Uh, one other uh, feature that we have here, um, it's sort of the uh, equivalent uh, of custom forces, but for integrators. Uh, just as custom forces let you uh, just provide a mathematical expression that becomes whatever arbitrary force that you want, uh, custom integrators let you do the same thing to define new integration algorithms. You just provide a mathematical expression for each step of your algorithm. Uh, and it's flexible enough. It can support a very wide range of uh, integrators, uh, both deterministic and stochastic ones. Uh, we've had people implementing metropolized integrators, where you, you know, run a, a short simulation, look at the change in energy, and then accept or reject that, the result of that run. Uh, We've had people implementing generalized Langevin integrators with this, where you have uh, you know, different Langevin uh, dynamics coefficients, like different friction coefficients uh, for different sets of degrees of freedom. You can implement multiple time step integrators using this, uh, like RESPA, uh, and many, many other things. So let me just give you a very simple example of this. So OpenMM has a built-in Verlet integrator. It happens to be a leapfrog Verlet. Uh, some programs use uh, velocity of relay, which is just a very slightly different discretization. And let's just suppose that for some reason you wanted a velocity of relay instead of a leapfrog relay. Well, we don't provide that. But no problem. Uh, four lines of uh, Python code later. Uh, so we just say we're going to create a custom integrator. And you give it your time step, so uh, one femtosecond. And then you just uh, call. Uh, one function on this integrator to define each step of your integration algorithm. So uh, the first step, we're going to do a computation for every degree of freedom. We're going to compute a new value for its velocity. Uh, and we're going to update it to this, you know, v plus uh, your force times time step divided by mass over 2. Uh, second one, we're going to compute your uh, new positions. And then velocity delay has a second velocity update. Uh, so there you go, four uh, lines of Python code, and you've just implemented a completely new integrator in OpenMM. There are actually some interesting things to notice about this. Um, the first and third steps look completely identical, uh, except that the force that appears here is not the same as the force that appears here, because in between your positions have gotten updated, and so your forces will have changed. You don't need to tell it that. It's, it's smart enough. It'll figure that out. It will say, oh. You know, you just changed your positions. I know that this means that the forces could have changed. Therefore, when I see an F here, I know that I need to recalculate it. So you don't need to worry about that. It just takes care of it all for you. Uh, you can have arbitrary variables that appear in here, both global variables and per uh, degree of freedom variables. You know, we have a few of them. There are a bunch of standard ones that are built in. Uh, so like v is velocity, x is position, f is force, m is mass, et cetera. But you can also define arbitrary other uh, variables that you want uh, and make use of them in your algorithm. So any questions on that? OK.